In today's show, we're going to talk about why Excel is a terrible data source for Power Apps. That's right, we're going to talk about negative stuff. I know it sounds evil, but Excel is super popular in the world, and a lot of people that use it as their first data source for Power Apps, and they get frustrated because all these things happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of those things. We're going to talk about why you shouldn't use it, what you should use in its place, and give you a couple of tips if you're really set on using it, how to do it better. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And in this quick Thursday tip, we're going to dive into why you shouldn't be using Excel as a data source. And I know that sounds almost backwards, right? Like some of the early Power Apps documentation pointed you to Excel as a data source, as like your first app, which made sense because we're all super familiar with Excel. But man, it's got so many negatives that I just stick with a plain, simple statement. You should never, ever use it as a data source. Okay, so as part of this video, I thought I should probably prove to you why, show you some of the downsides and hit a couple other topics along the way. So it should be a fast little video, but let's switch over to my desktop and just take a look. The first thing I wanna do over here is build us a really quick app, right? So if you go into Power Apps, you go to Create, and you say Excel Online, I know hundreds if not thousands, I know I'm saying thousands if not millions of people have done exactly this. They come in here, and then as soon as this loads, they're like, all right, cool. It's going to use the OneDrive for Business Connector, right? So to use Excel, there's your first challenge, is that the file has to be on your OneDrive for Business. No, it can't be in SharePoint. Thousands of people have asked me, no. It has to be in your OneDrive for Business. So I scroll down here and I'm like, hey, I wanna use this charity one. Where is it? Right there, charity contributions. You select the file. The second challenge is that your data has to be in a table and that table cannot have any formulas, right? It just has to be straight data in all of those tables. So I've built that simple sample and we're gonna use GIFs. And so we're gonna say connect, right? And these are showing me the tables I had defined in Excel already, so hit with connect. Now as if magic, after like 10 seconds, Power Apps has built us a app that lets us see the data, right? We'll hit preview up here. There's all my Excel rows. And I can go in here and be like, oh, I want to add a new one. So just add a new one. How much was the amount you gave? I don't know, it was 32. The charity was Chewy's Kids. I don't know. Just making up stuff here. And the first name is um, Ferguson, right? The cat that doesn't want to give anything to Chewy. All right. So we just filled in a couple rows. There's no required data because Excel doesn't have any concept of that. And so if we say save, it's like whoop, 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 right? The data goes out to our Excel file everything is great. We scroll down here somewhere, we see the data right there. And then if we were to go over to uh, the OneDrive right here and we were to find our file, let me scroll down. So then charity contributions, right? We wanna see it in there. So we open this up in our OneDrive and we're like, oh look, Ferguson's contribution right there. Yes, why wouldn't you wanna use this, Shane? Well, I need the Excel file open. Cool, let's go back over here. Let's add another record. So let's add one for 99, and we'll give this to nobody because it's not gonna go anywhere. And then we're gonna say Casper the Friendly Ghost, right? We hit save this time. We see the little ants marching, that's what we call this, little dots going across the top. And the ants are just gonna keep marching. And then we get an error. Ah! What happened? The requested source is locked. This is the number one problem with Excel as a data source, is that if anyone has the Excel file open, whether it's in the browser or in the uh, Excel thick client, it doesn't matter, that file is locked. Now other Excels can use that file because they have technology to share, but Power Apps can't get to the file. So now my app is just broken, right? Like it didn't save our data, nothing happened because of that failure. This is the number one reason you can't use Excel as a data source, right? Is that if anyone has the file open or anyone has the file locked for any reason, and it might be in a Power App that caused it to lock, it might be the Excel client that opened it, or a lot of times we run into issues with Power Automate flows locking it. If that Excel file becomes locked for any reason, your app doesn't work. So that is the number one reason you can't use it. Um, and there's just, there's no getting around that. Now, I say this, I will tell you that some people like they're like, hey, I'm the only one that's ever going to use this app in that Excel file. Great, then I approve of you building your app there. Also, if you're like, well, but Shane, I'm just trying to learn. I don't care. Awesome, another great user reason to use Excel. But it, I don't want production apps. I don't want an app that you're going to share with your whole team being written in Excel. 
So where should you use? Well, probably today the most common, you know, quote unquote free or included data source is SharePoint. So go make yourself a SharePoint list with the same data as your Excel table. Heck, in SharePoint Online, you can import an Excel file or an Excel table and it'll just make a SharePoint list for you. You don't even have to understand how it works. It just happens. And so then build your app because SharePoint doesn't have this locking issue. All right, so, so the locking issue is the number one issue. Um, another really common problem that you guys probably, you know, especially if you're watching this and learning, but so everyone knows, Another thing is that Power Apps does something we call delegation. And so delegation is the ability to have the server process. Like, so I, I have a SharePoint list with 25,000 items in it. And if I say filter out all the items where Shane is awesome, it's like two items in the whole list. But those two items, you know, we send the query over to SharePoint, SharePoint processes it on the server, and then just sends back those two items and they show up in Power Apps. Excel as a data source does not have any form of delegation. So all your functions like search, filter, you know, all those data type of queries, they are beholden to the delegation limit, which means by default, if you go over here to file and settings, it can only get the first 500 rows. So if your Excel file has 600 rows in it, only the first 500 get processed. So those last 100, they just don't get queried. Just, they're ignored. They're not there. Now, you know, like, like, but Shane, I can increase this. You're right. This can go to a maximum of 2,000. Well, if your Excel file has 2,001 record, you get the idea, right? So that's another problem. Delegation does not work. And if you don't believe me because you don't get any of those warnings, like Shane, you're dumb, you're not, that's not true, then I challenge you, set this to one, right? So say, hey, if something's not delegable, only get one record. Come back over here, right? Hit refresh. What are we going to see? Instead of this whole list, we see one thing because this gallery is trying to delegate this search command and so it's not delegable, so it says get the first record instead. So always a good way to prove that delegation is your problem. Also remember, if you are going to use um, an Excel file in your OneDrive for Business, you have to share that file with everyone that you want to use the Power App and edit that data. So just keep that in mind. Now, there is one other um, good use of Excel though. So my friends that I kind of bounce these ideas off of told me to remind you guys that sometimes we do see customers use um, Excel data as like read only. So maybe you want to have like a, a, you have an Excel employee list, you know, and you want to just pull that in so you can have that populated drop down or something inside your app. That's okay because you're just reading the data so you're not going to cause any locking problems. But honestly, if you were going to do that, I would say just take that Excel list, turn it into a SharePoint list and just don't even sweat it. I will not let my consultants build apps with Excel as a data source. If you are going to use it though, a couple other things to think about. Don't have column spaces in your column names. That's a real big problem for a lot of people. Technically they're allowed, they work, but they just add an extra layer of confusion. So if you're building with Excel because you're trying to learn, avoid spaces in your column names. All the data must be in a table like I already told you. And also remember that your cells cannot have formulas. All the Excel uh, fields here are literally just data, right? They could be numbers, they could be dates, all that type of stuff. Which reminds me, another challenge is that when Power Apps talks to Excel for the first time, it decides what the format of this column is, and then you're just stuck with whatever it is. So hopefully in mine, let's go see. You know, if I go in here, so if I hover here, right, it tells me first name came over as text. Amount, oh, the amounts came over as text. So I can't use them as numbers, without wrapping them in a value function first because Excel told Power Apps that they were not numbers, but they were text. So that type of confusion cause is issues, right? The same thing, let's see what the date column is. I think this one's broken also. Oh, so the date column did come over as a date time, so that's good, but that's another common issue we run into there, so. Okay, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Don't use Excel for production apps. That's what I uh, ask of you. Um, but if you're thinking about Shane, I want to do, you know, whatever, right? I feel like 120 Power Apps videos out here that'll help you guys, right? So there's plenty of things to learn over at training.powerapps911.com. We have a free intro class over there that I'm actually adding new content to today um, that has all types of additional things to start teaching you guys to go down the path of using real data sources like SharePoint or as you start to even mature further using things like Dataverse, uh, CDS, or sorry, not CDS, uh, SQL Server, Dataverse for Teams, right? There's a lot of other ones of those out there as well. So if you have any questions, comments, other feedback, other tips you want to pass to people, leave comments below. I respond to every single one of them. Sometimes it takes me a week or two. Shh. 
Um, but I try to hit all those comments and I try to like help people with that. Also remember, hit me a subscribe button, hit their like, you know, we have lots of this content. I put out two videos a week of this type of stuff for you guys. One quick one like this, one deep dive. There's a lot of information I am passing on to the world for free via YouTube. Consume it. So, all right, with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.